Hi everyone, it's Abby with The Bead Place and beadplace.net and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really fun bike ride wrap bracelet. This is using bike chain, vegan suede, and a couple of charms. Let's get started. Materials that we're using are our vegan suede, our 802 bike chain. You could also use Rolo chain for a similar look, but we prefer the bike chain. We also have a charm, a jump ring, and a slide bead. If you don't want to use a slide bead, you can certainly use a lobster clasp or any clasp of your choice. We just think the slide beads make a really nice finish for this particular bracelet. The tools we're using are two chain nose pliers and a very sharp scissors. The first thing we need to do is figure out how long we're going to cut our chain and our cord. So in order to do that, we're going to take our wrist measurement and use a simple equation. So if you're unsure of your wrist measurement, just take a tape measure and measure yourself tight around your wrist. So my wrist is just a little under six. So just to make the math a little bit easier to explain, we're going to pretend like my wrist is six inches for the sake of the video. So what we're gonna do is add a half inch to an inch to that. If you like to wear your bracelets a little bit more snug, add a half inch. If you like to wear your bracelets a little bit looser, add an inch. So I'm gonna go with six and a half for my magic number. So for these bracelets, you can either do a single, a double, or a triple wrap. So if you'd like to do a single wrap, just use that length and chain, a double wrap, multiply it by two, and a triple wrap, multiply that amount by three. I'm going to be doing a triple wrap. So my six and a half inch measurement multiplied by three is 19 and a half. So what I'm going to do is take my tape measure and I'm going to measure out 19 and a half inches. And once I've found that number, what I'm going to do then is take my pliers and I'm actually gonna pull open this chain. Instead of using a cutter to cut it, I'm gonna pull it open. And so we're gonna actually kind of treat the end of the link like it's a jump ring, but instead of pulling the jump ring open this way like we normally would, we're actually gonna pull the length of the chain open like this. So once you've pulled open the end of your chain link, what we're gonna do is take the pliers back in and close it, but we're gonna go about it a little bit differently. So instead of trying to push the um, chain end back into shape, we're actually gonna take our plier nose and kind of put it through the link and then just press down with your plier nose. And it's gonna kind of just mush the chain end back into place so that it looks like this. So now that we have our chain cut, we're gonna cut our cord. So what I like to do is use that same measurement that we used for the chain and then multiply it by two and then just add another couple of inches on it. Now, <clears throat> when we're cutting our cord, the trick to this whole bracelet is to make sure that you're cutting the cord at an extreme angle so that it creates a rather sharp point at the end, and I'll show you why. So our first step is we're gonna find the very center of our chain, and once we've found the center link, we're gonna take that very, very sharp, 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 sharp tip of the cord, and we're going to string it through that center link. So having that really, really pointy end to the cord makes it so much easier to string it through. Now this, cord is the perfect size for this chain. So it's going to kind of take a little bit of pulling in order to get it through. And you'll notice that it has to kind of go through sideways so that it sits flat around the chain. So what we're going to do is pull this through to the very center of the cord. So we have kind of a join in the middle where we have our chain intersecting with our cord. So our chain ends should be equal in length now and our cord ends should be equal in length now. If you look closely at the bracelet, you'll notice that each link has two different holes that are facing in opposite directions. So what you'll want to do is pick one direction and use that direction consistently throughout the bracelet. Choose one side of your cord and that's the cord that we're gonna be working with from here until the end of this side of the chain. So poke the end of the cord through the chain link next to the one 
that the cord is coming out of and pull it so that it is pretty tight to the link like that. So now what we're going to do is take the same cord and bring it up through the next chain link. And take the same cord and bring it down through the next chain link. And you'll notice each time I'm taking care to not twist the cord within my passes. Now in this one I've gotten a twist so what I'm going to do is pull it back out a little bit and just gently rotate my cord within the link. So I like to start with my fingers at the base of the cord and run them along to the end and that helps me make sure that there's not a lot of twists within my cord as I'm pulling it through. Now if you pull the cord too tight when we're making these passes, what it actually does is it can kind of scrunch up your chain and kind of get zigzagged and so that'll eat up a lot of the length. Um, in our bracelet. So when you're doing these bracelets, just make sure you're not pulling super, super tight with these passes. Just go with kind of the natural shape of the chain and you won't have to worry about adjusting for size. Now, if you've really made a mistake with the sizing of your bracelet, you don't have to start over completely. You can always go in and attach another piece of chain on. It's a little bit tricky. Um, but you'll just use that same opening and closing technique that we showed earlier in the video. So just continue working like this until you run out of chain on the one side. And then I'll show you how to start the other side. So we finished the one side. Don't worry if your chain has an extra link on one side. That's where we're going to add our jump rings. So now we're going to go back to the middle and we're going to continue on in the same way that we did before. So take the end of your cord through that next chain link and pull it through. If while you're working you notice that the tail end of your cord starts to get a little bit chewed up looking or starts to shred or just if it's difficult for you to poke it through the chain link, just cut another angle of cord. Um, we've got enough extra built into the bracelet tail ends that it won't really make too much of a difference if we need to cut a little bit off. So just remember to cut again at an angle so that it's easier for you to pull it through the link. I just finished weaving the second half of my bracelet and I wanted to show you I do have an extra link on the one side and that's just the way it works. We're going to use that extra link to actually add our charm. So we're going to use a jump ring and attach a charm into that link. So I'm going to use my two chain nose pliers to twist my jump ring open. Notice how I'm opening it up sideways rather than pulling open the ring long ways. So I'm going to slide my charm into the ring and then my charm goes into that extra link here that we have on the end. And then we're going to use our jump, or we're, sorry, we're going to use our pliers. There we go. We're going to use our pliers to close the jump ring. 
Whenever we open and close jump rings, we always wanna make sure to go in and check from the top and a couple other angles as well to make sure the ring is completely closed. Next, we're going to add a slide bead onto the ends of the cord. And this is going to allow us to kind of slide the bracelet on and off without using a clasp. So you could, if you'd like, use a clasp. You'd attach a jump ring into this end link, this empty one here on the side. And um, instead of putting the charm on this side, you would attach your clasp here and then attach your charm into that little empty link there. But in order to make this bracelet just a, a dream to take on and off, we are going to use a slide bead. So on the very end of the cords, we're going to hold them together side by side. And we're just going to poke those two little tail ends. Ah, we're going to poke those two little tail ends through the slide bead. Now you can use your fingertips or fingernails or tweezers or pliers to just grab those extreme cut angles at the end and pull it through. So you wanna make sure that you have both ends coming through and then slide the bead all the way to the bracelet. You wanna even out the ends. So make sure that the amount of cord coming out of the bracelet before it meets the stop bead is even. And then what we're going to do is try it on. You wanna make sure that you're leaving enough cord that you can get the bracelet on over your hand and then you can tighten it to make it the correct fit. To try on our bracelet, you'll wanna make sure that the slide bead is slid out a couple of inches from the end of the chain. Then we're going to put the bracelet around our wrist and wrap it around. And then we'll just kind of adjust the slide bead so that it is at the right length so that you can just barely get this last strand on over your wrist. So once it's at that tightest spot that you can just slip it on over your hand, we'll take the bracelet off and we'll tie knots right where the stop bead is. So individually tie overhand knots right next to that stop bead. So to tie an overhand knot, all you'll need to do is make a loop and then bring the tail end through the end of the loop and tighten the knot down right where you want it to be. Now, what we can do is take a sharp pair of scissors and trim the tail ends just so that you're leaving a little bit to kind of make it look nice. And then we have a finished bracelet. So what do you think? Would you do a triple wrap like this? Or would you do a single or a double? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, we'll have kits for all options linked below. Um, and I want to let you know, one of our staff members, Jenny, she did a really creative variation of this bracelet. We taught this workshop here in our brick and mortar store um, right before Memorial Day. Um, oh, if you're in the St. Louis area or anywhere in the United States, come and see us. Uh, we have a, a really fun store. Um, anyway, so Jenny made a really cool variation. She actually took another color and she did a red, white, and blue bracelet. She did silver chain, blue cord, and red cord. So she wove through the empty holes after she was done with her bracelet. So we'll insert a picture so you can check it out. Um, if you have any questions or if you just want to say hey, you can drop it in the comments below. Uh, we're pretty good about responding. If you need immediate attention, hit us up on Facebook or on Instagram and Pinterest as well. Um, please like this video. That really helps us out. And we put out new videos at least once a month. A lot of times we put out more videos than that. So um, subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching.